a group of mechanical engineers walk into a bar. They order some beers when one accidentally bumps into the table. Their drinks slosh, but the foamy beer doesn't spill. Now, maybe it was just the booze, or maybe it's just how engineers see the world. But a fundamental question bubbled up. Why is it easier to carry a beer with foam on the top rather than a cup of coffee? So it's not Newton's apple. But if you've walked around with a cup of coffee, you've experienced this phenomenon firsthand. Unless, of course, you've ordered a cappuccino or a latte. With those, there isn't much of a risk because there is foam on top, and so even if we walk fast, there won't be any spillage. And that's how things got started. Dr. Emily Dresser and Dr. Alban Sore are part of a team of Princeton University researchers led by Dr. Howard Stone investigating the physics of foam. So if you're trying to understand the physics behind the anti-sloshing mechanism, um, you want to really extract the different physical properties of the system that could matter. So we try to be the setup which mimic what happened in real life and what happened when you carry this container and when you move at different speed. A mini bar of sorts. If you use a glass, it's going to be complicated. The shape of the glass is cylindrical. So what we use is a very well-defined square container. And this container is placed on a moving table. Which they can vibrate with varying strength and frequency. And on top of the stage, we placed a high-speed camera. It allows us to follow the motion of every single bubble and then track the velocity of the bubble, as well as the motion of the interface between the foam and the liquid. They then tested different variables. The speed of the shaking, the intensity of the shaking. That could also mimic how quickly you are walking and how long your steps would be. They tested the amount of bubbles, the size of the bubbles. All of this allowed them to develop a set of equations to describe what was actually occurring when you walk around with a beverage. These equations describe the behavior and the motion of the liquid itself and the liquid with um, foam on top. Armed with these mathematical models, they could fill in the variables with data from their experiments. And voila! That's, uh, it's better to drink Guinness than a beer. OK, that's more of a qualitative analysis. The finer the foam, the thicker the foam, the better. Here's why. Walking with a regular cup of coffee generates waves. No foam means the waves encounter no resistance. When you're walking with a foamy beer, some of the wave's energies get transferred to the bubbles, which then move other bubbles, and then touch the sides of the glass, and then those touch more bubbles, and all of this means friction, and a dampening of the wave. That's what foam is doing. You increase the viscosity of your fluid, and because you increase the viscosity, the fluid has more difficulties to move. And just so you don't think this is all foam in games, the team hopes the dampening physics of foam can be scaled up. We're talking about damping the oscillations of um, liquids when it's transported. So that could be in a truck, that could be in a cargo, that could be... In an oil tanker out at sea, where sloshing can be very dangerous. The application of foam in a large-scale situation is a long-term goal. In the meantime, you can use the team's findings to prevent yourself from getting sloshed. Out of the ones we've tried, Guinness is the winner. Or you can avoid the problem entirely. I'm French, so of course I prefer wine. For Science Friday, I'm Luke Groskin.